And how are the flamingos today, Mr. Jarrett? I've told you everything I know. <laughs> yes, of course. My gratitude knows no bounds. Look, you can't keep me here indefinitely. I've done nothing. I've broken no laws. Please, please, you spare me the histrionics. I know you're a spy. You know you're a spy. I'm a journalist. I write for nothing more. Such modesty. But you're right, Mr. Jevert. We cannot keep you here indefinitely. There is only one solution to both our problems. What's that? We'll have to shoot you. Shoot you. Come on now. No time like the present. You can't do that. My dear fellow, we can do whatever we like. You should have thought about that before you came. Dear fellow, do try and pull yourself to help. But you... I thought I was going to be shot. Did you? And this is your lucky day, Mr. Jabert. You're going home instead. The flight leaves in ten minutes. Don't let there be a next time. You might not be so lucky. Will all passengers for flight 248 to New York make their way to gate number four? This is the last call for flight 248. Good morning. Jason King. Yes. Occupation? Writer. That's down there as well, above place of birth. Or is it below recognizable features? Why have you come to Lusanico, Mr. King? Why? I thought I might spend the time studying the mating habits of flamingos. I'll, uh, I'll look after this. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. King. Yes. Welcome to Lusanica. Oh, thank you. Will you be staying long? Well, it depends how much I like it. I am sure you will. I'm trying. Splendid. Uh, there is one thing. The flamingos only fly on Tuesdays. Terribly frustrating for them. What on earth they do for the rest of the week? Uh, Porter, which way? They never give up, do they? I beg your pardon, sir? Get my office on the phone, will you? Yeah. Another flamingo has just flown in. Yes, King. Jason King. I'm glad somebody's recognized me. Your photograph doesn't do you justice. Oh. 
You have far more. Magnetism. Exactly. Of course, I was expecting a man with a certain... Virility? And assurance. Commonly mistaken for arrogance. But do go on. I find your conversation fascinating. Then I'm not boring you. Impossible. But then I am my most favorite subject. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you'd like to tell me what you're doing here. Don't you know? There must be another reason. You're a stranger to Lusanica. I know it very well. I also speak French and Spanish fluently. Type and take dictation. Daddy must be proud. Anything you want to know, I can find out. Anything. At a price? Let's start with your name. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Lyra Delon. At your service. Now, that's a charming thought. How about dinner? At eight? How about work? What, now? Well, if you insist. I do need a complete background of the political scene, parties, philosophies, state control affiliations. And I shall need a map of the island. Uh, details of small or private airfields. Failing that, the location of a fairly secluded bay Suitable for anchorage. How deep? Oh, we can cheat a little. Say, six fathoms. Anything else? Hmm. Yes. An area in the hills. And one can hide things. Caves or something. An area big enough to hold a hundred cases of rifles. Ammunition, small arms, explosives. Don't look so worried. It's for Mark Cain. I've thought of the title. The Flamingos Only Fly on Tuesdays. Do you like it? Yes. Yes, Mr. King. Well, that should keep you busy for a while. Now, if you can think of the type of people who'd want to buy a thousand rifles, jot that down as well. Yes, Mr. King. I'll start work right away. Splendid. I'll, uh, be in touch. So shall I, I hope. At eight? Mr. Jason King's room, please. The porter will take it up. Are you crazy, baby? I do this for tips, not exercise. Room 404. You just rang my bell, sister. Room 404. Thank you, Benny. It's one of the better suites. Looks right over the bay. Nothing but the best for Mr. King. After you, Betty. Come in. Mr. Jason King? Yes. Your suit, sir. My suit? Mm-hmm. I think there's been some dreadful mistake. But hold on. You can take this one down and have it pressed. That won't be necessary, Mr. King. Please sit down. We won't keep you long. Well, that's the oldest trick in the book. And you fell for it. What can I do for you, Mr... Uh... You can call me Sebastian. I have a feeling I will. This is Benny, and that's Hector. I had a little dog called Hector. He was fat and fluffy and... Uh... Let's talk about flamingos, Mr. King. Well, if you're really hung up on them. Flamingos only fly on Tuesdays. Yes, so I've been told. Is there some significance in it, or do I simply stay indoors? We have whole violence, Mr. King. Curious enough, so do I. I bought it. But sometimes one has no alternative. Please sit down, Mr. King. Look, what exactly do you want? Let's not insult each other's intelligence. I'm sure you'll tell us when you're ready. A superb cut. Oh, do you like it, Hector? Do you know that I designed them myself? Do you like this idea on the shoulder? What was that? What are you doing? Sebastian Flamingos! I know nothing about them. You've just destroyed a work of art. No, I, I've only worn that once. I shall have to sit down. How about this one, then? Put that down. Beautiful cloth. Down, Hector, down. Flamingos, Mr. King. Tall, skinny, and pink. 
You know the password, you know the rendezvous. Just tell us where and when. Look, I know nothing about flamingos. Look, stop them! Now it's a four-piece, man. We can do much worse than this. Good day, Mr. King. Don't move! Next time we meet may be much more painful for both of us. Come on, Ben. Be seeing you. Has it been delivered yet? Yes, sir. It's in the basement garage. The porter will take you down. That's all right. I'll manage. The registration number is on the key, Mr. King. Thank you. is in the wrong heap of tin. Me? I thought this was the best way to meet. I've read all your books. All of them? Do you make love to as many girls as Mark Cain? Well, what are you doing here in this car? Oh, would you sign it, please? Oh. Who's it for? Me, Karen. Pretty. To Karen, with love, Mark. Don't read chapter five. Chapter five? Thanks. Don't forget your pen. Oh, but I haven't finished yet. Flamingos only fly on Tuesdays. I beg your pardon? Flamingos only fly on Tuesdays. I had no idea until this afternoon that you were going to be the contact. Karen, would it surprise you if I told you? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, you are good, aren't you? But you can trust me, really. Where are we going? We're going for a little drive. And you're going to tell me all you know about flamingos, who they represent, what you represent, and what I'm supposed to represent. Ah, Mr. King, I'm so glad I caught you. I thought we had our little chat at the airport. Oh, yes, but then you've been so busy since then, haven't you? Time for another. I'm afraid not. I've got a date. I'd better introduce myself properly. Special Division Internal Security. Maurice Pelly. I think I'd better leave now, Mr. King. I think not. We'll all have a jolly little chat, shall we? May I ask where? Police headquarters. Where else, Mr. King? After you. Well, I can spare you about five minutes, and then you'll need four men and handcuffs. <laughs> My men are very competent. And what am I doing here? I believe assisting us with our inquiries. Inquiries into what? <laughs> Come now, Mr. King. We can do better than that. I'm a little sick and tired of being credited with a vast fund of information. I came here to do research on the sequence to my novel. A novel? Sounds most impressive. It happens to be a fact. I don't care what it sounds like. And running guns is a sideline. You come in, please. <laughs> I mean... Do I look like a gun runner? Don't answer that. You know Miss Delon, of course. Miss Delon is a member of my department. I wonder where she puts her badge. I'm sorry, Mr. King. For what? 
From the look on your superior's face, you're either due for promotion or a raise in salary or something. Just the main facts, Miss Dillon. King asked for a map of the island, locations of private airfields, and a bay suitable for anchorage. He also wanted information on the mountain region and areas suitable for hiding a hundred cases of arms and ammunition. A hundred cases. I explained all that before. It is background information for my book, Mark Kane. You, you see, Mark Kane gets involved with his gun run, run, uh, yes. I don't think it's your kind of story. Anything else, Miss DeLong? He wanted information about the various political factions and any groups who would be in the market for weapons. For the book, dear. For the book. Ah, yes, we mustn't forget the book. What are you going to call it? The Gunrunner's Guide? Thank you. Sir. Good night, Sergeant. We must do this again sometime. Now I know your speciality. Well, if you're through with this little charade, I'll be on my... Sit down, Mr. King. Why? The whole thing is ridiculous. Is it? At the airport, you said you were here to study the flamingos. At the hotel, you asked Miss Delon to obtain for you some very dubious information. A short while later, you have a meeting with a reactionary group. Then a secret meeting with a young Lusanican girl. In one day, Mr. King, you have done more than some people I have arrested and tried for treason. Oh, it sounds like a perfectly average day to me. It's at night that I tend to be a little more active. Then you admit it. I admit to nothing, except being the innocent victim of some incredibly stupid machinations. Doesn't it depend on how fine the distinction is between Mark Kane and Jason King? One is fact, the other is fiction. How many times do they overlap one into the other? How many times have you, Jason King, been involved in some notorious incident? How many of your exploits have emerged as the exploits of Mark Kane? Mr. Pelly, I lead a perfectly simple life. Certain incidents are based loosely on personal experiences. But that does not mean to say that it, I... It means to say, Mr. King, that the world of Mark Kane and Jason King are very close together. I think you would run guns just to get the feel of them. Fiddle-dee-dee. What about the meetings? What meetings? I just enjoy meeting people. It's, a, it's an essential part of my life. Yes. Oh. The girl says she's a fan of yours, and she was merely waiting in the car to collect your autograph. Yes, it's on the back cover of the book. I was about to say goodbye to her when you inadvertently popped up. Very well, she can go. So can you, Mr. King. Thank you. To the airport. Are you deporting me? Exactly. On what grounds? Undesirable alien. Are you listen... Alien, now you listen to me, Mr. Petty. I have no intention of leaving your island until I get exactly what I came for. Now, is that perfectly clear? Perfectly. Yeah. Bring his car over. I'm quite capable of driving if you remove these ridiculous things. They'll be removed at your hotel whilst you pack. There's an economy flight in 45 minutes and you will be on it. Economy? Someone's trying to kill you, Mr. King. Yes. So it seems. Well, they try once, they're bound to try again. You'd better stay in Lucenica after all.
That's not very gallant. Whatever gave you the idea that I was gallant? Will this take long? All day. I've come to apologize. That takes exactly ten seconds. And to make up for yesterday by spending the rest of today doing your research. On Pelly's orders. Well, someone has to keep an eye on you. And it's either me or two big, silent policemen. I was. Going out. Shall we do some work? Oh, I think we can do much better than that. I'm here because I'm on duty. In official language, you'll be accompanied wherever you go. Splendid. Well, we'd better make the best of it. What are you doing? Offhand, I can think of four ways of persuading a woman. Seduction, extortion, gentle deception, and rape. Well, if it has to be one of them, I suppose... seduction? I didn't say that you had a choice. Just a drive. Well, if I'm going to write about this island, I might as well see all the hot spots. I never thought you'd be stupid enough to come into this area. Well, I know where we... We're quite near a top-secret missile site sold to left-wing anarchists by a knicker salesman from Stoke-on-Trent. The rebels are believed to be in this region. I'm getting awfully tired of being thrust into your political menagerie, you know. And the flamingos? I suppose you'll say you know nothing about them, too. Well, it's obviously some kind of password. But unfortunately, nobody's explained to me what it means. There are two political factions on the island. One represents a certain left-wing ideology that's been attempting to gain power for some time. So far, they've used normal political methods, but uh, there is an increasing demand for action. If they had weapons. Oh, no, not another revolution. Possibly. And the other faction? We think they're controlled by the syndicate. Oh. The island is ripe for exploitation if the laws on gambling and property were changed. Well, it won't be the first time a revolution's been started by slot machines. But why me? We know a consignment of weapons is on the way. Only last week a journalist admitted acting as intermediary. You arrived at the right time, asked the right questions and uh, spoke the right words. Which only goes to prove that it's a lousy password. What's going on down there? Flamingos. With or without firing mechanism? The real thing. Superb. Quite superb. I used to come here a great deal when I was young. Have you always lived here? Since I was six. I went to school in Europe for a while, but... I had to come back. So glad you brought me here. It's quite definitely my Cain country. Magnificent scenery, fanatical revolutionaries, and a crime syndicate to boot. It's perfect. It could be an animal of some sort. Wearing size 10 boots by the sound of him. It's extraordinary, but unlike flamingos, pelicans can uh, carry about 12 kilos in their bills. I think I was mistaken about the boots. Would you like to make a dash for it? What would Mark Cain do, Jason? He wouldn't have got himself in this ridiculous situation in the first place. Ah, natives. How do you do? My name is Jason King. Beautiful scenery. This is Lyra. Oh. My apologies, Mr. King. Don't go. I may need you as a witness.
if you can give you me... You look in a bad way, Mr... Uh... Oh, I, I am in a bad way. I, I, I would appreciate a lift. So hop in. Thank you. I'm staying at the Hotel Malesco. I'm staying there myself. Fancy. Ah. What happened? I was uh, savagely ambushed. By who? Flamingos. Pink flamingo. You need a drink, pal. Oh, what a discerning chap you are. Perhaps you'll join me later, when we both had a bath. Yeah, sure. I was just going to call you. Oh, really? I seem to have lost one of your officers. Uh, Lyra, dead on. That was rather careless of you. But we were attacked by a bunch of... an army of rebels. They left me unconscious. You look fine to me, Mr. King. It was... Uh, one tries it. Terrible. Mr. King, you're under arrest. Stand up very carefully and put that glass down. And what's the charge this time? Suspicion of murder. Satisfied? Policemen in England would have the whole place surrounded by guards. Just try running, Mr. King. I can prove everything I said. Save your breath. You see that man over there? He's an American. His name is, uh, 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 anyway, Drakin. He picked me up and brought me to the hotel. Now ask him. Why should I? Proves nothing. But he's my witness. He'll tell you the condition I was in. Ask him. Mr. Drakin. Yes, that's right. Mr. King tells me that... Mr. King? Don't you know this man? Well, I, I've seen him around the hotel, of course. He tells me you gave him a lift in your car. Now, what is this? Now, you know perfectly well that you did. Now, please, tell him. I'm sorry, pal. This just isn't my scene. Excuse me. One move, Mr. King, just one move. Mr. Perry, mind is superior. If you know how to use it, much more enjoyable. I'm not interested in your powers, Mr. King. We have our own methods. I don't doubt it. What have you done with Miss Dillon? Nothing. If you weren't behaving quite so conventionally, I'd be searching for her right now. And you'd be so much better at it than the police force and my own department? Exactly. You'd be looking for a body and I'd be searching for a prisoner. A prisoner? Oh, Mr. King, I know everybody on the island. Including Drakin? He's a salesman in cosmetics. His background's been checked very thoroughly. He's the only cosmetic salesman I know who sells B.O. And he lied to me. Maybe you didn't kill her. But you know where she is. No, I don't. But I would find out. How? Ever since I arrived here, I've been pushed around, manipulated by people who think I'm important to them. Go on. I think Lara was taken away simply because they wanted to get me out of the way. So? Release me. And they'll try again. Why? Guns. Various people, including yourself, think that I have them. One man knows I haven't. He's tried to kill me, have me held for murder. Because he has them. His name? Drakey. He had to get me to the hotel, but his one mistake was in lying about it, in front of me. You should have stuck to writing novels, Mr. King. Your assessment of motive is quite accurate, except for one thing. It fits you better than Drake. <laughs>
Mr. King wishes to hang himself, the least we can do is to give him enough rope. Oh, uh, thank you. What did you say your name was again? I'm called Prosco. Well? I'm sorry, Mr. King, but we know of no one called Sebastian. He has a friend called Hector. Roscoe, tell them the flamingo is ready to fly. Understand? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right away. King wants to see you. I was chapter five. Mr. King, you must leave. It isn't safe for you here. Let me be the judge of that. Have you come to take me to see Sebastian? That isn't possible. Why not? You don't understand. It's so dangerous. Karen, I'm a little fed up of being treated as a village idiot. From now on, I'm going to be doing my own thing. And that means finding out who has those guns. It isn't you? No, it isn't me. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Now. Are you going to take me to see Sebastian or not? This way. You wanted to meet my father, Mr. King. Your father? Karen is the rebel in our family, Mr. King. Please sit down. Were you followed, Mr. King? Uh, funnily enough, no. Benny? Got any suits up lately? It's all right, Benny. Mr. King is our guest, for the moment. In that case, I'll have Bacardi with lime, crushed ice, and a sprig of mint. This is charming. I assume this is a business call? Yes. I want some assistance from your people. I need a car and some information. We're not a charitable organization. Yes, I know. You're the local reformation movement. It would last about five minutes if it was known that you were trying to buy guns. That isn't true. My father's trying to stop them. We are not gangsters, Mr. King, but there are many who would be if they had the guns. And what about the threats? Not to mention Heck and Ben leaving me practically naked. Well, at the time we thought you were the contact, so we hoped you'd go away. And Karen? My daughter's very impetuous. I wanted to persuade you. Has somebody determined to kill me? Or have me put away for a long while? Have you any idea who? No, that I wouldn't know. But there is a man named Markon. He went to America for a few years and returned with too much money. And too many friends. Fairly tall, well built, wears a vulgar striped shirt occasionally. That's it. Somebody is behind him. Somebody who would like to see my party discredited. What about the government? Oh, thank you. Out of touch with the people. One little push and it would fall down. Benny, Mr. King would like the use of a car. Big or small, man. Oh, I don't mind, as long as it's fast. enjoy getting the answers from you. You all like them. We'll see. Inside pocket. You get it. Right hand. And very, very slowly. I need another hand. Fingers for beginners.
CIA. The one and only. Inner center. Spiritus. Carter. Magna. Factotum. Thanks very much. The central gets a bit touchy if we lose these things. Cosmetic salesman. I thought it was too good to be true. What's American intelligence doing here? Well, the same as you, I guess. Or isn't Department S on our side anymore? Yes. But they're struggling on without me. For the moment. Who are you with, then? And what my passport says I am, a writer. <laughs> I believe you. It's the only possible explanation for the hash you made of things. You haven't exactly looped the loop to help. Well, you know the rules. You better come along with me now. How's that? The NUP have the impression that you're the boy with the guns. Sebastian's bunch? Yes. What makes them think that? I'm afraid I did. And they have this absurd idea that by stuffing you into somebody's waste disposal unit, it'll keep the peace. Well, thank you very much. You've had quite a busy day. No, not particularly. In fact, if I hadn't been allowed to break jail, it would have been a bit of a bore. Excuse me. Hey. This way. He hasn't been dead long. say he just put the finger on you. Now, Benny couldn't have meant me. It was something, something that I'd done. Markin must have killed him. They're the only ones who stand to gain anything if Sebastian's party folds up. Marcon? No, somebody's behind him. Right. Codename Flamingo. And whoever he is, he must have promised guns to half the thugs in Lusanica. Flamingo. Today's Tuesday. Isn't it? Yeah. And I've spent every Tuesday night in the bush for the last three weeks. Flamingos only fly on Tuesdays. Where? Well, there's half a dozen landing strips in the bush. Big enough to land a short-haul freighter. Easily spotted by civil radar and an immediate target for any security troops. It can't be a ship because it's difficult enough to navigate during the daytime. Of course. And they'd get through the radar. It's brilliant. Who would? Flamingo. They fly in on the lake like pink parachutes. An airdrop on Flamingo Lake. Nah. Rifles in the water. Well, they could have floatable water-type cases. Do use some imagination, Drake, in. Well, it all fits. Now, they knock me down, and they... Had to take Lyra away. Now, why? Because she'd seen something on the... Of course. She'd seen something. Markers. It doesn't matter. At least we know how, when, and where. Oh, magnificent. They probably use a floating beacon. Can you see any? No sign of a plane. Wish I'd brought a camera. Sure, why not a box of paints and a canvas, too? Oh, now, don't be absurd. Would you mind letting me your binoculars for a second? Jason, will you stop sightseeing for a minute? I want to look at that shack across the lake. Shack where? Straight across, left of the fallen tree. I've got you. It's got to be them. It'll take us about four hours to get around there. No. Half an hour. You're kidding. Not at all. Oh, I wonder where she'd got to. Well done, Jason. Now, if Mark Kane had found a boat, my readers would have winced. Now, Mark would have dived straight in, swum underwater. Come on, Jason, give me a hand. My dear chap. And just for the record, who is this Mark Kane? Might as well ask, is there a Pope? 
He's known in over 90 countries, you know. Not by the CIA. Not surprised. They're still unravelling Dick Tracy. You should know Mark Kane. He frequently tackles your most difficult assignments. You're kidding. It is no joke when writing puts you in the super tax bracket, Mr. Oh, books! Come on, Jason. Make with the paddle. Peasant. Don't help them with the beacons. Half an hour, Sebastian. That's all you've got left. Pig! wouldn't dare touch you. Boys! Come on, it's nearly time. You should really be more careful who you hit. I know Mark Kane wouldn't consider that very sporty. Don't you believe it? They're coming back. You're right, Jason. They're here. Oh, good evening. Mr. King! I told you he'd come. Oh, we never doubted it for a moment. You all right? Things are improving. <laughs> Sounds like a jeep. There you are. King. Oh, Inspector Pelly, you certainly picked the right. Bang goes my surprise. You know, all in all, you've rather excelled yourself. I frequently do. Frequently. Ah, uh, you disappoint me. I'm sure Mark Kane would have got it much sooner. I did. When I let you think that you thought you let me escape. Knowing that I'd go to Sebastian and Drake in. No one else you could go to. You see, Mr. King bringing guns into Lasanica isn't enough. No, it's also necessary for me to discredit the party of the people. Well, of course. The opposition's all very well in a democracy, but in a revolution it only gets in the way. So you invented a gun runner, threw suspicion on him, and then just sat back and let it all happen under your official scrutiny. Precisely. You were the perfect candidate. Why'd you plant that bomb in the car? Insurance. If things had gone wrong, I'd have given you the car keys. A man died in that explosion. And many more will die in the revolution. It is necessary. I have plans for this island. You'll fail. The people will rise against you. On the contrary, they will rise for me. You are always the catalyst. Kill you in the right circumstances, arrest your key people for bringing in the guns, and revolution will follow. My revolution, not yours. There's a plane coming in. I'll go make sure the beacons are set.
Welcome home, gentlemen. Would you mind raising your hands, please? And this way. Thank you. I'll take him back to the hut. Once they've collected all the rifles, it'll all be over. It's over, final. Then what are we waiting for? We? Why not? We might get wet. I don't mind. If you don't. It's rather a good opportunity for research at that. Research? For Mark Cain. Oh. You see, in Chapter 5, Mark Cain finds himself in this dinghy, in the middle of the lake, with this very attractive girl, question is, would he? Could he? Should he? It'll be fun finding out. Now, there's the double twist. Double twist? Oh, yes. You see, it's really you all the... Oh. Ah! This yours? Certainly not. I abhor violence!